Well, it's great to be here at Comdex. It's a chance for us every year to get together and see all the change that's been taking place. And with this fast-moving industry, the pace of change has never been greater. In fact, we can find change everywhere today. Uh, with last Tuesday's election, uh, even Bill Clinton and the Democrats are facing some change. The changes now are being discussed not simply in the context of data processing or the computer industry, but in a much broader context, in the context of how we communicate, how we organize, how we educate, how we run business. And the changes that will be brought by this will go well beyond uh, the group we find here. However, this industry will be at the center of all of it, with its software innovation, its competitive hardware, will be shaping this so-called information highway. Now this next era that we're moving into is quite different than the original PC era. That one was done simply by uh, having a few companies that believed uh, spring it on the world and it was a complete surprise. Here we have thousands of companies and it's talked about you, all the time. You can hardly pick up a magazine without reading about what's going on here. Now, it's often cast in the light of who's doing a deal with who, what companies are getting together, and you know, who's getting ahead, who's winning, who's losing. And I don't think that's really the context that helps us understand uh, where we ought to go. I think the best approach is to really look at what will it be like once it's pervasive? Uh, what will the benefits be? And then step back from there to see how we can get out to that. So I decided to de take this year's speech and dedicate it to that vision, uh, to showing those scenarios. Uh, now that means I'm going to go this, this full hour uh, without mentioning a single Microsoft product, uh, if I can uh, control myself, that is, and uh, really just, just look out ahead. Now I did do this uh, uh, one other time in 1990 when I introduced the original information at your fingertips concept. Uh, there I had some uh, fun scenarios where people were doing a lot of things and most of what I showed there has already come true. Uh, object orientation, uh, document centricity, uh, fax, mail integration, improved ease of use. Uh, one notable thing I had in there that has not taken place is that uh, I was showing the use of pen computing, a tablet computer where the signature was being uh, put in and and the notes were being recognized. Uh, I still believe very much that that will happen and will be important, uh, but that's one case where the, uh, the time frame uh, wasn't exactly right. The last four years have seen uh, very substantial growth in this business. Uh, every year, uh, uh, the increase is fantastic because we're at a selling rate worldwide of over 40 million PCs a year. And many people had predicted that, that we, we had reached saturation, that there wasn't the opportunity to keep going. And yet, whether it's in business or home or in education, uh, the, the growth has been there. And I expect that to continue. So it is a very healthy situation. Lots of winners and losers, but a, an industry that, that's not only growing by a revenue point of view, which we see here, uh, but also as the prices are coming down, having a broader and broader impact to empower people with very rich information tools. Key to this growth is the pace of innovation. And one way that we can see that uh, that's most dramatic is by looking at what's happened to the microprocessor. Uh, going back to the original uh, PC, we see that that 8088 uh, had 0.33 MIPS of capability. Uh, well, it only let us do a very limited number of things. With the 286, uh, we got enough power that we could uh, move up and do applications that had never been done on 8-bit PCs. The 386 that came in 1986 for the first time allowed us to do graphical interface and that's where Microsoft uh, and many companies put out uh, graphical type products which have now moved into the mainstream. Uh, for after the 386 we moved up to the 486 taking us to 20 MIPS. And here we started to see collaborative applications, uh, sharing of rich information between applications, machines that could really run those applications together 
and give you substantial benefits. And now this year we've seen the emergence of the latest generation, the Pentium, that takes us over to 100 MIPS. Now that pace of improvement uh, is exponential improvement. It's not just linear increases, it's, it's exponential. And it's very hard for us to appreciate what that means. Uh, in fact, this pace is going to continue. Uh, so as we look out ahead, it's hard to say specifically what the performance will be, but there will be incredible uh, performance that applications will be able to take advantage of. And we'll use that to the benefit of the user, to search out the important information, to provide uh, new interface techniques. There is no slowing as we look at the next decade in terms of the processor speed or memory size or storage capabilities of these systems. And so it's really up to us to think, how do we want to take advantage of that? Of course, at the center of this will be uh, the idea of digital conversion. That is, taking all the information, books, catalogs, uh, uh, shopping approaches, uh, professional advice, uh, art, movies, and taking those things in their digital form, ones and zeros, and being able to provide them uh, on demand on a device looking like a TV, a small device you carry around, or uh, what the PC will evolve into. All of these form factors will count, but we'll need to have a common architecture so we can take all the authoring, the work done to prepare this media, and make it easily available to people using these different devices. And so this is what we're reading about all the time uh, with all the different stories. Uh, and the communications companies have to think, think about this because it is their future. Uh, media companies from TV to cable to Hollywood studios need to get involved because it is their future. Uh, the consumer electronics industry is coming into this and will need to be one of the ones building uh, these devices. And certainly for the PC industry, this is what it's all about. Lots of advances, uh, lots of things that, uh, that we can draw on to have growth in the years ahead. So even at 40 million units a year, uh, we still have lots of frontiers to conquer uh, and lots of impact. Now this video I put together uh, uh, relates to the title of today's speech, which is Information at Your Fingertips 2005. I picked that year not because that's when you'll finally start to see these things happening. I picked it because I think that's a time frame where uh, these devices will be pervasive, that people will expect them, they, there will be uh, everyone using them. So small businesses, consumers uh, of all types will have them, and the, the critical mass of information will be there uh, to make them uh, very straightforward to work with and, and get a lot of power out of. And so this uh, 2005 uh, is, is a decade away. I think there's a lot of people who are going to say that I've been too conservative here because, in fact, I'm not showing any technologies that need to be invented anew. Uh, everything here you can find in some limited form uh, already. Uh, some people will criticize this as being too far out, too futuristic. And as long as I get a balance of people uh, criticizing it uh, equally on, on both counts, I'll feel like I've uh, hit, hit the right uh, point. Uh, if we look to our past, uh, our belief in graphical interface, which we announced in 1983, it took seven years to happen. Uh, our belief in CD-ROM technology, where we held our first conference talking about that in 1986, it's only this year that you can say that's taken place. So we're often optimistic, but I think the key here is not so much the uh, specific year, but having the scenarios in mind and having an agreement as an industry on what the opportunities look like. So let's go ahead and, and start the story uh, that I prepared. just wants to talk to you. That's it.
Now you're going to keep this to yourself, aren't you? Skinny hat. Ah, thank you. And a macchiato double full straight into your belt. Ah, perfect. Oh no, allow me. You got the last one. Yeah, that's right. I forget that. There we go. That's Laz. He wants to know why we're late. <laughs> He'll survive. <laughs> you need my coffee. No kidding, man. Coffee before work. Coffee. Oh, don't mind if I do. So good of you two to join us. There was a line. Hey, McGowan. Yeah? Old lady tall. Yeah? I thought you were cutting back. I am. It's half and half. I never get used to this time. Anyway, let's get going. Merchant Marine got whacked last night down at the docks. Victim's name, Alejandro Rivera. Proven passport. No apparent motive. He obviously annoyed somebody. Yeah, that'll be all for now. We'll check it out. I'll call it up here on the map here. Uh, like you can see here, wallet PCs, mobile displays. Hello. Good to have you drop in. Morning, Bill. Hey, guys, what's up? Oh, you know, chasing the bad guys. Some things never change. Well, I never the promised the future would be neat and clean. Looks like you've got a tough one on your hands. Yeah, it could be. Well, we gotta get going, Bill. See you later. Uh, don't forget, let's be careful out there. Let's go. <laughs> well, one thing we can see that hasn't changed between the uh, Twin Peaks scenario I did four years ago and this one is that uh, lots of people are still drinking coffee up in Seattle. <laughs> well, first we saw uh, Becca, uh, the policewoman, using her little wallet PC in order to buy uh, the latte there. And so this little small business uh, person who's got the coffee stand uh, has a display and she was simple, simply able to push a few buttons and transfer currency over to them. Uh, we call it the wallet PC because it's capable of really replacing everything that you carry with you and more. So that getting messages, uh, seeing the latest news, uh, uh, seeing a uh, different location, keeping track of your schedule, keeping uh, hundreds of pictures of your children uh, stored there, all of those things are easily possible with, with this kind of technology. Now here she used just the infrared. Uh, to transfer the currency across using a secure protocol. And so it's easy to think of this as simply a grown-up pager uh, that will cost only a few hundred dollars, but using the latest chip and display technology will have the kind of power uh, that she's showing here. The next thing we saw was the flat panel display in the vehicle. This means that mobile workers of all types will be able to collaborate together, call on expertise throughout the world, bring them up, and not just see their face, but look at information like the video we play here uh, and uh, data banks that will be at their disposal. Uh, the advance in display technology is a big part of this because in order to carry them around and, and use them in the way that we use paper today, they'll have to be small and light and very high resolution. One of the things we called up on this display was a map uh, that let us see exactly where we were. Uh, you could see on this map the different uh, police cars around the city, the traffic conditions, and a map will be pervasive in all these applications where you're seeking out a store or a hotel or a restaurant. Uh, you'll be able to get uh, uh, guided along the way in a very straightforward fashion. And so it's just one data type uh, that people will be familiar with uh, and they'll, they'll come to expect uh, in all the interactions they have. Well, let's go back and see how this uh, story unfolds. Hi, honey. You been up long? Uh, a little bit. You had your breakfast? Yeah. Well, me now. Okay. Police have identified the victim as Alejandro Rivera, a Peruvian sailor whose ship docked in Seattle early yesterday morning. 
Rivera was Aren't you supposed dead. to be working on your report for world cultures? Yeah, I am. Mm -hmm. This is not yeah. it. Yeah. Turn it off. Thank you. Is that a nice look, Mom? Oh, don't even start. I have a video <laughs> conference later today. They can only see this. Have a great evening. Thanks for watching. Good night, everybody. Everyone keeps in touch by email, but some people have never actually met their closest confidant in person. Today, Partners in cyberspace meet face-to-face -face for the very first time. Will their relationship survive human contact? We'll talk about it on today's Open. Next. November 14th, 2004. Welcome back to CBS This Morning. I'm Harry Smith. Good morning. I'm Paula Zahn. This morning, the latest on the transition at the White House. We're going to be taking a close look at the president-elect's plans for the nation and learn why she says it is time for a change. We'll also let you check out two hot new movies and Mark McEwen's going to show us if it's going to be hot anywhere today. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry, Harry. Bad news. Not a pretty picture. I'll be back with the whole sad story for you in just a few minutes. Or click those buttons right now for my national forecast. Or a look at your local weather. Oh, come on. We need a little what does this project do, actually? Like? Uh, tomorrow, fifth period. Jackson. I know, I know. But I want to stand under pressure. You know, if you just learned to plan your time a little bit better, you wouldn't have to do everything at, at the, the last, last minute. minute. I know. Right now, we're going to look at this morning's choices for you on CBS This Morning. An in-depth look at the incoming administration. Is the first husband in line for a cabinet? Seriously, post? Jackson. Are you going to be able to get this done? Yes. On time? Yes. John Stare takes you to a restaurant that is actually cheaper than eating at home. Ten generations she needs something more. The extraordinary success something real that the other kids can Jesus actually Jesus touch. The new comedy, I'm Just Dead, or the interactive hit, Jurassic Park 6.1. For years now, you've heard me talk about ways to save money by doing things yourself. But when it comes to lunch in Gates Sweet. Center, Kansas, you're much better off leaving it to Franny. Everyone wonders how she does it. Yeah, like that. Cool. plans her weeks best to go around the grocery store sales and stocks up when she gets a good price. She buys big quantities. I, I need a case Mom, I really need this thing for my project. I, I think it'll make it a lot better. Mm -hmm. spoil before you get to it. And most importantly, What do you want? I need you to drive me down to Pioneer Square today. Please? Okay, 3 o'clock. Not 3.15, 3 o'clock, okay? Yeah. Well, here in the home, we see a couple different devices that have been incorporated. A little wall panel display, uh, which based on the icons down at the bottom, can be used to manage security, uh, temperature, uh, different lighting scenarios. And here, it's being done for lighting, and you can pick the uh, particular activity you're going to engage in and have all the lights uh, the way that you want them. Over at the TV set, uh, we saw that Whenever you stop watching a show, you have a choice uh, that you can come back and, and watch the, the rest of it later. You're no longer tied down to the particular schedule uh, where that, that show comes out on. So it's not just movies, it's also music, uh, any type of show, educational video, uh, anything you want to do, you're in control. Um, so we, could, we saw the, the last little minute of the uh, late night show, and then we moved over and saw the personalized menu uh, that has been set up uh, for this user. Uh, now, what she's done is, is said the show she like, likes and the things she does very often and put those onto her home page. 
Uh, and you can see that these different icons light up when a new show comes in. Uh, in fact, if you get behind, behind multiple episodes, you could even have a count of the number of episodes that you haven't seen there. And we had a special Oprah show there, uh, and there was a chance, you may not have uh, caught it, a little icon where you had a chance to send in a message and tell your story about meeting people uh, in cyberspace. So here we're showing the kind of control that an individual will have over this system of setting it up so they only have to pay attention uh, to what they're interested in. Next, as we got into the CBS News show, we, show, we saw how a producer of a show could use this flexibility. And so we worked with CBS to come up with some examples of, of how they would use buttons that you might click to go into depth on a particular story. Uh, here we have things like the weather. Uh, some people are really nuts hearing about the weather. Uh, personally, I find it somewhat repetitious, uh, and I'd, I'd rather skip over it. But there it is, it's an option. Uh, take an area like sports. Uh, you might want to hear a lot more about your favorite sport or just skip over the, the sports that you don't really care about. Uh, so it's the creators uh, of the, the news information who have a lot of control in terms of giving you those uh, buttons as well. Then over in the kitchen, we had Jackson browsing around out on the net trying to get his homework done at the last minute. And when he started out, he went up to essentially the library to find out about pre-Columbian art. And in fact, he traversed a lot of links in his exploration here. He went up to uh, the local university, University of Washington, he went out to the Library of Congress, uh, and then he linked over and got down to a museum in Mexico, the Museo Nacional, that specializes in pre-Columbian art. Uh, now we see here uh, an ancestor of, of uh, one of today's popular politicians, Ross Perot, and uh, that's, that's why it's called the Peru family. Um, and so he's uh, going to uh, be interested in finding out where he can get a reproduction that's, that's something like this. Now out on the network, there will be all sorts of third-party services to help you find what you want. Uh, you'll be able to get referrals from your friends, you'll have people that are the equivalent of consumer reports writing things up, uh, you can hear from buyers of the similar product what they thought about it, all sorts of ways to be directed uh, to what goes on. So in a sense, we're taking the very mechanism of the marketplace, the matching of buyers and sellers, and making it far more efficient. In this case, Jackson was uh, choosing the proximity, how far was he willing to go, how much was he willing to pay, how similar did it have to be uh, before he'd uh, be interested in a, a particular choice. And it found for him a gallery uh, down in downtown Seattle uh, that uh, uh, he's going to be interested in going and, and buying a reproduction from. Uh, so let's go see what happens when he goes down there. Let's go. Let me get this. There we go. There we go. What is it? Our dead friend, Rivera. Yeah. The guy was a smuggler. He was supposed to meet an FBI agent this morning. He was going to flip on his boss. But somebody got to him first. You better call DEA and see what they got. Huh. Later. Let's check it out. All right. Then I'll handle the new shipment. Oh, I'll take care of it. Exquisite, isn't it? Oh, it's beautiful. It's all part of a collection of hundreds. Oh, that's wonderful. All authorized reproductions, of course. We can print any of them right here or download anything in the collection to your wall display at home. Well, actually, I'm not the one doing the shopping today. It's my son, Jackson. It's a little lighter and yours kind of come out. I that. think I know which one you're talking about. I saw it in the directory. Okay. 
Here's the one you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it? That's it. That's perfect. Terrific. Unfortunately, I sold my last one almost a week ago. Oh. It's hard to keep these things in stock. Look, there wasn't time, okay? I had to handle it alone. Does the word discretion mean anything to you? It's very important. It's for a school project. Could you refer us perhaps somewhere else? Listen, I think we got a new shipment in this morning. Uh, can't promise anything. Okay. Give me a minute. Thank you. He's gonna love it. doesn't matter. What matters is that your little escapade was all over the morning news shows. That'll be it? Yeah, thanks. Mom? <laughs> He's a little more than I expected. Could you squirt me a 20? You're running a deficit here, you realize that. Mom, I swear you can trust me this time. I hope you get an A. Yeah, me too. Be careful, please. <laughs> Slim. 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 Did you take one of the new pieces? I just sold it. You sold it. I went and saw a car leaving the scene in a hurry last night. Old Aurora, silver, mid to late 90s. Finally, something. Washington plates, first letter D, possible L. Huh. That's all we got. So you guys got a lead? <sighs> Gee, Bill. <laughs> Not much. We'll run a check, but... You're going to end up with a lot of cars in that description. Yeah. Well, we got to work it out for us. Some things never change. Thanks, Paul. Come on, partner. Let's go do some police work. Yeah. We saw on the wall of the gallery there a very nice display of art. And what this means is that art will be far more approachable than it is today. The ability to have this kind of passive display, uh, have it in your home, and call up uh, art of all types. Learn about it. Learn about the story behind it. I believe is going to make art more interesting to a broad range of people than it ever has been before. Uh, you'll be able to download uh, the bits and all of these uh, creative works will be stored as objects and with, with the object will be stored the information about what you have to pay to license it to use it in different ways or who you would contact if you want to get a broader set of rights. And so this kind of object approach is going to mean that creative people have a much broader market than they have today uh, because the marginal cost of sending it across the network will be very low uh, and uh, the, the opportunity there is, is quite dramatic. As we moved into the office, we saw on this uh, rather cluttered desktop uh, all the business information that this gallery owner deals with. Uh, he's got his employees, he's got his suppliers, He's got his sales plan. Actually, down at the bottom, he's got a little uh, graph that shows how he's doing in sales. He's got a little icon um, that, that has his printer in his phone so he can control those things. He's got a little thing, which is the layout of the gallery. Uh, and here we don't have any more running applications whatsoever. Uh, instead of thinking of running applications, you just think of the data and the applications are brought in. Uh, we also have here a very advanced feature, long file names. Uh, I think in 10 years that will probably be uh, commonplace. Um, we also saw that from this device uh, we could do video conferencing with somebody at a public phone booth. And these terminals will be everywhere. Uh, so wherever you find a, a payphone today, wherever you find an automatic teller machine, uh, on uh, the seat back in the plane, in your hotel room, many, many places you'll have a general purpose terminal to get directions, buy tickets, look at schedules, look at maps, uh, perform banking transactions, or do the kind of uh, video conference that we're showing here. And so it'll be out there uh, accessible wherever you go. 
Uh, well, now let's see how uh, Jackson is going to do on this uh, little homework assignment. Take your seat, settle down, we've got a full day. Settle down now. Lila and Fred, get off the net. No more games. Come on. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ballard, I do believe you are first. Jackson. Mr. Ballard. I had a hardware problem. <laughs> Okay, my report is on pre-Columbian art. We find this kind of art in Peru, where we study the Incas, right there. I brought a replica of some of the art in the mask right there. And there wasn't anything unusual besides the dead body. Thanks a lot, you've been really A nice place, a little short on deck chairs. Yeah, and the pool needs cleaning. <laughs> Hey, it's Laz. DEA is a dead end. The FBI came through, though. It wasn't drugs our friend Rivera was smuggling. Bingo. Yeah, I threw this little presentation together for you guys. Um, kind of explains all this. And, well, let's just start it. I hope you have as much fun watching it as I had putting it together. So, here we go. Most of what we know about this culture, we know about them from their art. So, this was an incredibly sophisticated civilization. And then one day, they just disappeared. Nobody really knows what happened. I mean, maybe they got hit by the plague. Or maybe the ink is dusted on them. <laughs> but they're gone. Kind of made me wonder where our civilization will be in a couple hundred years. That's it. Very well done. Thanks. Can we just do this as discreetly as possible? I promise this will only take a moment. I just want to ask if there's any. I heard some uh, crepitus around the left clavicle. Slight local swelling. Okay, I'll set up a scan on arrival. I need his EMR, Daniel. Phone number, please. Uh, you think you can tell me your phone number? Two three eight. One eight nine five. Ballard. Ballard. Jackson. 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 Hey, nice to meet you, Jackson. Daniel, I'll page the mother. Give me an AP view of the shoulder, please. All right. I'll get the orthopedist. This is gonna hurt a little bit, champ. Ah! Ah, it's, it's over. Ah! 
That's it. Man. That's it. We're done. Where's my mom? Hey, we're gonna call her. She'll probably meet us at the hospital. Hello, this is Dr. Nihei. Hi, Doc. Okay, I'm gonna need an AP of the left clavicle. You should be singing now. Great. Great. Okay, a little to the left, please. All right. Uh, sorry, other left. All right. Thank you. Good. Okay. Dixie, there's a posterior displacement of the distal fragment left clavicle. Huh. The doctor says you've got a broken clavicle. Uh, Jackson, you're going to be just fine. I'll see you in a few minutes. Daniel, bring him to 6A. Tell him mom's on the way. You got it, Dix. Champ, your mom will be waiting for us when we get there. Okay? Just rest for now. You guys got to call the cops. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Sure, we'll call the cops. Just take it easy for now, huh? What Jackson put together in the classroom is the kind of animation uh, that today we'd only associate with a high-budget film. And so in a, in a similar way uh, that what used to require typesetting and very expensive tools uh, to make a professional, presentation, uh, professional document that we brought down into the hands of the average user with advanced word processing tools, uh, now we'll be bringing these animation capabilities down to uh, individual authors. And what this means is not only students, but teachers and anyone will be able to put together rich things. Inside Jackson's presentation, we saw lots of images that he'd pulled together off the network. And that's another key point about this digital world. Taking someone else's work and adding to it, picking the subset you want, blending it with another one, is very, very easy in this environment. And so for the first time, we'll see teachers sharing their ideas, uh, reviewing to say which is the best, and then tuning it for the particular thing they're trying to do, and making it compelling in a way that will allow them to compete with the production values of TV that uh, kids are exposed to so much of the time. Then moving to the ambulance, uh, we had a collaboration going on here. In a sense, you can say this is the most mission-critical application, uh, dealing with a, a health emergency. And so we had three different people, the nurse in the emergency room, uh, the doctor who was on call, and the uh, gentleman in the ambulance, uh, all trying to decide what to do. And it wasn't just a video image that was being exchanged there. There was an immense amount of data uh, being made available. For example, the nurse was uh, getting advice on this type of problem, uh, what uh, steps should she go through. In fact, we drew that material from a CD-ROM title uh, that's been published about the human body. Uh, we called up Jackson's phone number, we called up his medical records, uh, and, and these people could have been anywhere. That doctor, for example, could have still been at home uh, providing the advice and yet able to help out uh, in this way. And so all kinds of business activity, whether it's designing a product, dealing with a customer problem, uh, uh, presenting a, a product opportunity. All of these can be handled very well with this kind of large screen display and the, the user interface uh, that we're demonstrating here. Well, now let's go back and find out uh, how Jackson's doing. Next. The corner arrived at, call it 0800. Next. Area secured, yes. God, I hate paperwork. Tell me about. Mm. Now what? An attempted juvenile abduction, two perps, both Caucasian males, one 30, 35, the other in his 50s. I'll keep my eye out. Driving a late 90s silver old Aurora. Oh, it's worth a shot. Come on. Hey, dude, keep the change. Let's go. Honey, have something else to do. I'm hungry, moms. You know what I don't understand, Jack? So why would you run from someone who's pointing a gun at you? Who's not pointing the gun at me? Miss Ballard. Hi, I'm Beth McGowan, Seattle PD. This is my partner, Stu oh. Ryan. We'd like to ask Jackson a couple questions. If it's okay with him, you feel like? Yeah, it's fine. I know that you already told the other officer, but uh, I need to know what happened. Well, these two guys jumped out of their car. A silver old? Yeah, it was, uh, it was an old Aurora. And this one guy, he tried to grab me, so I ran. I mean, this guy had a gun. 
you ever see either of them before? No. You told the uh, officer, uh, Kelsey, that you thought maybe they were after your backpack. Uh, you, you mind if I... Uh, oh. Yes. So, what do you think they wanted with your backpack? I have no idea. You ever do drugs, Jackson? No way. Nothing? <laughs> I'll be in a cop if you want. It won't be necessary. Oh. So where'd you get this? Tell them. May I help you? Oh, hi. Um, Becca McGowan, Stu Lyons, Seattle PD. Uh, you're the only... Yes. We understand your store sells pre-Columbian art. Yes. Reproduction. Ah, oh, well, we're uh, working on a case that involves pre-Columbian art, and we need to get a little background. Quite frankly, we're out of our depth. And, and you thought you'd pick my brain. Yes. Well, then, I guess you better come in. Thank you. We'll go up to my office. I've just got this very dark. It's a beautiful store. Thank you. How valuable are these things? Everything I sell is a reproduction. Some of it's very expensive, but there's nothing that's valuable. You mind if I record this? Not at all. Now, uh, these uh, pre-Columbian pieces, Mr. Uh, Blackwood, um, where are these made? Well, most of mine are made in Peru. In Peru? Various suppliers. The workshops in Mexico are cheaper, but it shows. Now, what exactly are you investigating? Smuggling. Illegal importation of antiquities. Mm. That's the problem in this business. Most of the pre-Columbian things you find, fake. That's why I sell reproductions now much safer. Hmm. Do you have a list of suppliers that we could look at? I'd be happy to. Now, shall I limit this to uh, pre-Columbian? Fine. do you sell in an average week? Oh, that depends upon the week. The pre-Columbian works have been very slow lately. Anything in the last couple of days? Well, nothing that comes to mind, unfortunately. You know what would be great? Perhaps you could give us a list of all of your transactions, say, for the last week? I'd love to. But I have to protect my clientele. So, I'm afraid that this is where I draw the line, my dear. Anything else? Other uh, questions? Just one. What kind of car do you drive, Mr. Blackwood? A Ford Trapeze. Thank you. You've been very helpful. Miserable sack of sh um, Say, looks like you guys are really uh, putting things together. <sighs> Hi, Bill. Uh, well, we have something, it's just not enough. Oh, I know that kid could pick him out of a lineup. This guy's way dirty. So now you'll... Uh... Arrest him? For what? Misdemeanor assault, stolen property? It's not enough. I'm gonna get him on something that sticks. Well, uh, see you, Bill. <sighs> yeah, let's go. Several times here, we've seen uh, voice recognition play a role. Uh, when uh, we're filling out the forms uh, for the officer, when we're taking transcription here. And I, I do think this will become a really central way of interacting with the computer. The advances in performance that we've talked about, the advances in the software that uh, certainly 100 companies or more are working on, as well as the kind of context we get 
by understanding natural language, by having applications explain their state and what's likely to be coming in and feed that back into the input system so it can pick uh, the, right world, the right words in this kind of environment. All of that will come together. So we'll see speech command capabilities, we'll see speech dictation capabilities, as well as, of course, the ability to store speech and, and play it back, which is uh, very, very straightforward. Uh, here we can actually see the words uh, being recognized as, as they're being put together there. Now speech won't totally replace the keyboard. Uh, we'll still have the keyboard and we'll have different forms of pointing including even handwriting uh, that will be used to, to work with these devices in a seamless way. We also saw uh, an advanced use of the business desktop. Uh, here we had a database, but it wasn't like today's databases. It was an object-oriented database. Uh, so it had uh, pictures of the suppliers. Uh, you could just point at the icon there and make contact with that supplier or see your status of orders from them. So everything's kind of integrated together, which by putting the object capability into the file system itself and the operating system, we'll have the ability to pull things together in this fashion. Uh, we clicked up a, a pop-up menu on this and we chose the common ways we want to filter it, in this case choosing uh, pre-Columbian. And so the ability to navigate through doesn't require thinking about different forms of storage because all the things have links uh, that span from one to the other. Well now we're, we're about to see the end. Let's uh, see how this turns out. second. What kind of ending was that? I mean, you know, I, I think in the future uh, with something like this, you ought to be able to choose the ending. So I, I ought to be able to uh, uh, take, take my little wallet PC here and say that I'd really like to see the alternate ending. where I'll have to draw the line, my dear. I'll take that. Ah, whoops. That's the trouble with your business. Too many fakes. Book him. Oh, don't forget to read him his rights. You know, I think this thing's solid gold. Lovely. Well, this is a nice look for you. Oh, thanks. A latte? If you're buying. The way I bought last time. You did not. So we got our, our happy ending there. The what we've seen here requires a number of things to come together, a number of building blocks uh, to make it all happen. Uh, the first is we need very high speed networks and it's going to take lots of competition that has to be unleashed through deregulation to get people building these at full speed. We have the wired network that goes at very high speed but we also have the wireless network 
uh, that's being formed through things like the auction that's uh, coming up for the PCS spectrum. We also need a wide variety of hardware. Uh, people who can make that little inexpensive small device. Uh, some of those will have voice capability, some won't. Uh, the screen displays will come in, in every size you can imagine, wall sized, notebook sized, desktop sized, uh, and many companies will, will participate in that. And these include classic consumer companies as well as uh, all the PC companies. We'll also need a lot of uh, new software at the operating system level, at the authoring tool level. Uh, we've got to really empower uh, people who are not technologists to reach in and do their work here. And that's a ripe area with, with a lot of uh, uh, new ideas and, and simplicity being brought to that authoring environment. And most importantly, we need great applications and services. Uh, this means uh, hospitals thinking about how they can be involved, or any company that uh, sells their products thinking about how they work together with their uh, customers. Now I'd say that we are seeing excellent progress in every one of these areas. Uh, that's what makes me confident that a decade from now it will have been brought together. On the software side, uh, the excitement and innovation around both CD and online services uh, is a big part of where the new ideas are, are coming out. Uh, we have a number of, of new startup companies doing CD titles and, and bringing them to all sorts of subject areas. Uh, for example, we have a 3D landscape title uh, from books that work, uh, where you can not only design what your garden looks like, you can see what it's going to look like as it grows uh, years into the future. Uh, for kids, uh, we have a title, Freddy the Fish, uh, that comes from Humongous Entertainment. Uh, it takes the animation and graphics capabilities of the PC to a new level uh, by sitting on top of um, some of the, the elements in the uh, graphical system. Uh, another great new title from 7th level, who's done very state-of-the-art an animation, is Amani Python. Uh, this man title. is no ordinary man. Uh, and of course that draws on the uh, TV series and the movies that were done there. Uh, besides startup companies, we have classic media operations also saying how can they take the work they do uh, in different mediums and use interactive as part of that. Uh, so from Turner, uh, working together with Swift, uh, we have their Gettysburg uh, title where they put out an interactive CD that goes along with the uh, movie and, and TV show. Another example of this is the Discovery Channel, uh, which when they did their Normandy series put out uh, a CD that let you interact, get into a lot of depth that simply wouldn't fit into the, the length of the TV show. The CD gives us a way of having lots of information and audio and video together. Another uh, platform for innovation certainly is, is network and dial-up. On the internet, we're seeing an explosion of, of web-type pages. Uh, even the, the White House has recently come up and uh, did some excellent work. They let you uh, listen to Bill Clinton, uh, go out and see different government agencies, fill out forms, uh, and everybody's getting involved. Even small companies, uh, one of my favorites out there is a, a little company called Virginia Diner. Uh, let you uh, click and see pictures of their famous peanut brittle. Uh, you can even fill in a form and order that and, and they'll send it to you uh, right away. It's this kind of experimentation of what's popular, how should it be presented, um, getting the tools out there uh, that's going to get us to the critical mass of information that makes people want to have electronic access everywhere they go uh, every day. The impact of all of this uh, is quite substantial. It's not just movies on demand. People think of it uh, that way and, and they, they mislead themselves because that alone would not be enough uh, to justify this investment. Uh, people think of it as computing, but I think that also misleads us because it's not really about compu computing. If it's about any one thing, it's about communications. Taking today's phone system to a new level where we not only have video, but we have the intelligence in the system to help us locate things, to follow links, to store the information so we can get at it uh, when we want to. Uh, the kind of electronic commerce that will go on here of picking real estate, finding a, a professional that you want to work with, allowing people with expertise, even if they want to um, stay at home most of the time, to offer that expertise and work 
uh, through the, the screen. It's, it's really very, very different uh, than anything that's happened before. Even entertainment is quite broad. Uh, TV shows, music selections, uh, gaming will have TV game shows that you can uh, bet along with the uh, uh, contestants. We'll have multiplayer games for uh, bridge and chess and, and role-playing games. Uh, we'll even have gambling. Uh, so if you want to uh, lose money very efficiently without coming down to Las Vegas, uh, you'll be able to do that right there on uh, your screen device. The government's role, besides opening up the regulatory environment, will be to participate as an application provider. Uh, going in and, and uh, filling out forms, renewing your driver's license, uh, that will be very straightforward here. No more uh, lines in, involved in that. Having transparency to the political process, seeing the bills that are being debated, seeing who's saying what, uh, very straightforward here. Finding people who have a common point of view and organizing uh, politically will be straightforward. Uh, medicine is, is also a big part of this. Just those electronic records moving around uh, so that experts can quickly see what, uh, what your case is, uh, that will make healthcare not only less expensive, but far more effective than it is today. Uh, the most important opportunity, I think, is in this area of education. Uh, education is what we use as a society to provide equal opportunity to help every individual realize their full potential. And I think for the first time these tools will uh, eliminate some of the labor intensive and, and individual aspect of that and allow for a sharing that's never gone on uh, before. Now I've been out uh, many times talking about uh, my excitement about this uh, information highway era. And every time I speak, there are a number of concerns that come up. Uh, this is not without its, uh, its uh, areas that, that we have to watch out for. Uh, first of all, ease of use. A lot of people think maybe they'll be the only one that won't be able to use the system because they've seen things like config.sys or uh, VCRs uh, that they find very difficult today. And that's a challenge to the industry. I happen to believe that as we move uh, and take graphical interface and go to the next level, uh, which I'll call the social interface, where you interact with a personality that you've chosen and it remembers what you've done, uh, that we'll be able to solve that problem. Privacy is a major concern uh, about the system knowing all these things that you're doing. Uh, and we need to use both technology and policies to control, uh, uh, to make sure people are confident uh, that they can use it for all their activities. Universal access is a serious concern. Uh, what about people who live in rural areas? Uh, what about people who, who aren't rich enough to buy these devices? What about people who are, uh, have never, never been uh, exposed to the PC? And some of those questions are political questions of how will it be subsidized for various users as it reaches out uh, into the mainstream. A lot of the worries that people have really come down to a fear of change. Uh, will their job be displaced? Is there something they ought to be learning about? And I think that's why even though all of these articles are, are kind of like a mania, a feeding, feeding frenzy, I think the focus on this debate and getting people thinking in advance uh, how we want to shape this thing and, and what they ought to do individually uh, is a very worthwhile uh, thing. The opportunities here are incredible. Uh, this is where the PC industry will find its growth. Uh, we, we can be at the center of this, and we will be as we take our architecture and expand it out to those new, new form factors and move into new applications. It's not just about productivity tools. Uh, uh, communication of all types, whether it's within a, a particular application like uh, design work, or whether it's uh, uh, creating new kinds of markets. Those things require lots of companies to step back and take a new look. Dozens of killer applications. Uh, now every company is going to have to avoid business as usual here. Uh, there'll be lots of new companies uh, that grow up uh, to do very well here. And the only big companies that do well are ones that, that are going to be entrepreneurial. Uh, break out of the boundaries and make sure that, that they obsolete their own products instead of having other people come along. Uh, this is not something that's just happening in the United States. 
Uh, there are great ideas about how this should be used everywhere in the world. The awareness, the discussion of it, uh, is it a, a, a high pitch, uh, even in countries that are newly converted to be market economies? And in some cases, they'll invest in the infrastructure because they're starting really from scratch and, and want to make sure they're not uh, left out. So all of us should reach out and find partners, uh, not only in, in this country, but uh, in every country in the world. Uh, the opportunity here is, is unbelievable. Uh, looking back, I think we can all say that uh, the PC industry has come a long ways. But it's really nothing compared to what's going to happen here. I am more excited about this uh, and these possibilities than I ever have been since the beginning of the PC. It's going to take thousands of companies from several industries to make this happen. And everyone here is going to have lots of opportunities arising out of this. Thank you.